All right, YouTube, today I thought I would share with you my Ruger Mini 14 GB model. This is in 223 or 5.56 NATO. It will shoot either round safely. This has a one and seven twist barrel. So one twist and seven inches. This is the GB model with the 18 inch barrel there. And as you can see, this has the front sight one piece along with the bayonet lug. So this was essentially a model that was geared for law enforcement and ended up in a lot of the US prisons as a guard tower gun. You can see there this has the flash hider at the end. The barrel is threaded for the flash hider. Mini 14 has the short gas system. It is much like an M1 Grand or Mini 14 in the sense that it has an operating rod and a rotating bolt. This also has a bolt hold open device there. You see we'll kind of activate that and the magazine sends that lever up and the bolt locks rearward so as you can see a little bit of a difference from the m14 or the m1 is the outside of the op rod here is in this kind of like this shed or cover which kind of helps aid in reliability uh, there's nothing there for your hand to interfere with and uh, this mini 14 happens to be in stainless steel this is a law enforcement trade-in. This was a gun that came out of, I think, the uh, Maryland uh, prison system, specifically from WCI, which I looked up the, on the internet, and I think it's Western Correctional Institute or Institution. So this was a prison Mini-14. It probably got used a lot on duty in a tower, and uh, probably not shot a lot. Doesn't look like it was shot a lot, and it's still in pretty good shape. So as you can see there, this was manufactured after 1994, I believe. The show number range indicates it was made somewhere around 96 or 97. And as you can see, this has the restricted law enforcement government use only, 9-14-1994 is what that number indicates. So basically after that date, this was manufactured and would have been considered an assault weapon during the uh, crime of gun control 10 year period that that was in force. And you can see there also the Sturm Ruger Company Incorporated, Southport, Connecticut mark. And also kind of uh, telling you there to use uh, use your instructions, uh, heed your warnings, use uh, safe gun handling, that sort of thing. So there's the heel stamp of that Ruger Mini 14 trademark. If you notice here on the Ruger Mini 14 that it has a sight somewhat similar to the M1 Grand or M14 in that it has a adjustable uh, elevation there and also adjustable windage and it looks like you can use a small uh, pin or a bullet tip even to push in that detent it makes it really easy these are kind of neat sights they don't look the greatest while you're using them however they, they're pretty user friendly so the mini 14 was developed of course by bill ruger and primarily by gun inventor technician engineer a guy by the name of Jim Sullivan back in the 19 early 1970s and in fact this magazine here this is an actual uh, ban era magazine so you can kind of see the 1994 mark and uh, of course this was provided when I purchased the rifle so they probably had a lot of extra new magazines during the trade-in period and this was included when I purchased this so this is in really nice shape I'm pretty happy to get it. This is the first Mini 14 I've ever owned in my life. I've looked looked at them for years. Uh, never come across the right deal, I guess, 20 years ago. They used to sell these at Walmart. Not the GB model, but they would be uh, the regular model, essentially, and they were like $400. And I thought, wow, that's too much money. And I never bought one, of course. And then, you know, years later, um, Mini 14s retail for around $1,000, give or take a couple hundred bucks, depending on the model and sometimes you can get used ones or you can get the old GB model, which I think is actually cooler. So if you get the GB model, which I don't think is made anymore in, in this state, as far as um, with the site where it is, uh, the site has actually moved up on the newer uh, tactical model. And so it's kind of neat. It's kind of a collector piece, pretty happy to get it. And like I said before, it's in nice shape. So. These things disassemble similar to the uh, M14 or M1 Grand. You pull the trigger guard out, this rotates out, slides out. Uh, your magazine release, it's a rock and lock, much like 
any uh, M14 or, or similar to the AK style gun. Uh, there's not a lot to go wrong with the Mini 14. It's pretty reliable. Uh, as you can see there, it's got the, the old school rotate, rotating bolt, two lugs lock in. Um, and actually there might be some lockup points here at the back. But uh, you know, much like a grand style action, which, uh, which was invented by uh, John Garrett, uh, you know, a little bit of grease on the rail, grease on the lugs, uh, that helps a lot. So let's we'll see if we can get this magazine out, kind of look at it a little bit. but. Uh, Kind of went through this earlier is the band markings this probably came out of the prison armory essentially that it was traded in from some ruger markings there the mini 14s kind of over the years have been kind of dogged for their accuracy however um, many people have gotten you know two three moa so you know it's not as accurate as an ar-15 however the rifle is very reliable and the factory mags uh, seem to make it a very reliable rifle there are uh, a lot of old aftermarket magazines and there's mixed reviews you can probably go down the rabbit hole on how good uh, aftermarket magazines are for the minis and there's the 20 round magazine which was kind of standard and then of course here's a newer style Ruger factory 30 notice there's no band markings since the band has expired and you kind of see the follower there you see the activator for the bolt hold open device and it's got a very pronounced lip there so this probably all aids in reliability feeding of the rifle itself. They are a constant, uh, constantly kind of radius magazine for smooth feeding, whereas like an AR Stanag Miles Stanag style magazine would have a straight section. These do not. So kind of a folded steel. It looks like the older 20 was built a little tougher. However, there's probably some improvements on 30. If you notice, there's kind of a uh, added or welded, spot welded tab, which is probably better than the old uh, formed steel uh, tab on the older 20 rounder. They both share that uh, little circle there. I'm not sure what that circle's for. Anyways, a little bit of a comparison there on the magazines. Both share a similar follower. Almost identical, really, almost. Anyways, there's the two magazines. Like I said, once again, this is a uh, rock and lock uh, style insertion for the magazine. Get it in there. And there we go. So there's a 30 in the Mini 14. By the looks of it, since this came with the 20, this is probably issued with 20s in the actual uh, prison that it did its duty in. Um, that's probably about all you need in a prison. They're more of a deterrence more than anything interesting thing point of interest when i uh, transferred this from my local dealer after i purchased it online uh, the actual guy transferring it to me said he was a retired uh, cdc corrections officer and uh, said he'd done like 20 plus years out on the west coast uh, for the cdc and he said that i asked him i said so did you ever actually have to fire the mini 14 he said they had mini 14s in their towers and he said uh, he actually did have to fire it one time, uh, at least uh, while he was working there, and it was uh, warning shots. So he didn't actually have to use it on a person, but he did use the Mini at least on one occasion um, for warning shots. And he shared with me pictures of his retirement uh, Mini that essentially was the newer style tactical model that the state had essentially purchased for him upon his retirement. So he must work there. Must have been a corrections officer for a long time to receive that as a gift. So, and it was kind of a commemorative model. So anyways, a little bit of a story there. Sorry to, hopefully it didn't bore you too much, but uh, interesting story. And uh, he definitely had some uh, appreciation for uh, the Mini. So you don't see a lot of them around sometimes. It's kind of one of those rifles where um, maybe sometimes it's not the first, you know, everybody wants to buy an AR or, or whatever. And then kind of the Minis kind of get pushed to the back over the years. Uh, but I've always wanted one, finally got one. Um, took it apart, cleaned it, greased it up, and uh, definitely like it. And I was really happy. Um, you know, I paid a decent amount of money for it, but it wasn't over the top. It was a good trade-in price, and uh, it's actually less than what you would pay for a regular uh, new Mini today. So I was definitely happy to get the GB. I remember seeing a GB model at a range years ago, probably 20 years ago. I said, wow, I'd love to have the GB model, and uh, never kind of ran across one for 
a reasonable price. And back then I think they were like 500 bucks for a trade in. I was like, kick myself today for not purchasing one then. But anyways, I got one now. And I think they're a neat gun. I think the Mini 14 is probably underappreciated. And like I said, at the time, your law enforcement entities would purchase these minis on contract um, because they could buy, they could source them a lot cheaper than buying a Colt AR-15. So if you didn't, and you really, they weren't gonna be shot a lot. They were kind of be, gonna be put in a rack, uh, carried on duty, carried in a tower, carried in a trunk of a car. And they were kind of a, a rifle that would perform when you needed it. It wasn't the most accurate gun in the world, but it worked well and it was very reliable. And they're pretty well built. Uh, Ruger has kind of perfected the investment cast system on many of their parts, the receiver being one of those parts. And this is the model all in stainless steel. Very cool looking gun and I uh, thought I would share, share it with you today. And I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll talk at you again. And thanks for watching.